uh, members of the church here today as well, which is fantastic. And we're going to start by singing our opening hymn, Tell Out My Soul, The Greatness of the Lord. Let's stand. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad And we pray together, Lord. Lord, we are here to worship you. Would you meet us through your Holy Spirit? Teach us through your word. Show us where we need to change. And give us all we need to serve you in the world. For the glory of your name. Amen. Would you like to be seated now? move into a time of confession. Lord, we've said you're a king, but have not served you as we should have done this week. And so we confess our sins to you in the silence. Lord Jesus, Trust is less than certain. Lord Jesus, forgive us and help us. When our love is less than bright, Lord Jesus, forgive us and help us. When our prayer is less than frequent, Lord Jesus, forgive us and help us. Lord, we are sorry for these things. Please help us to walk closely with you this week. So may the God of love bring you back to himself, forgive you your sins, and assure you of his eternal love and acceptance. In Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Would you like to stand? O Lord, open our lips. Let us worship the Lord. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be forever. Amen. And we continue to praise God by singing majesty, worship his majesty.
and the colleagues for the fourth Sunday of Easter. <coughs> Risen Christ, faithful shepherd of your Father's sheep, teach us to hear your voice and to follow your command, that all your people may be gathered into one flock, to the glory of God the Father. Amen. If you'd like to be seated, Rosemary is going to bring us our first group. The first reading is from Corinthians Chronicles 1, 29, verses 1 to 5 and 10 to 13. Then King David said to the whole assembly, My son Solomon, the one whom God has chosen, is young and inexperienced. The task is great, because this collateral structure is not for man, but for the Lord's Lord. With all my resources, I have prepared for the temple of my God. Gold for the gold work, silver for the silver, bronze for the bronze, iron for the iron, and wood for the wood, as well as onyx for the settings, turquoise, stones of various colours, and all kinds of fine stone and marble, all of these in large quantities. Besides, in my devotion to the temple of my God, I might get my personal treasures of gold and silver for the temple of my God. Over and above everything, I have provided for this holy temple 3,000 talents of gold, gold of gopher, and 7,000 talents of refined silver for the overlaying of the walls of the buildings. For the gold work and the silver work, and for all the work to be done by the craftsmen. Now, who is willing to consecrate themselves to the Lord today? David praised the Lord in the presence of the whole assembly, saying, Praise be to you, Lord, the God of our Father Israel, from everlasting to everlasting. Yours, Lord, is the greatness and the power and the glory and the majesty and the splendor, for everything in heaven and earth is yours. Yours, Lord, is the kingdom. You are exalted as head over all. Wealth and honour come from you. You are the ruler of all things. In your hands are strength and power to exalt and give strength to all. Now, our God, we give you thanks and praise your glorious name. This is the word of the Lord. Thank you, Rosemary. Thank you, That's great. So we've been working through the Lord's Prayer in our family services, and today we're coming to this very last phrase. For yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory for ever and ever. Amen. And the first thing I think to say about this phrase, it isn't actually in the Lord's Prayer. If you read Matthew and Luke, where the Lord's Prayer is written, these words don't actually appear. They were actually added a hundred years um, after Jesus' death by the early church. And probably the reason was because they didn't want the Lord's Prayer to finish with evil, deliver us from evil or the evil one. Rather, they wanted it to end with praise. So the early Christians added this phrase in right at the end. And the reading that Rosemary's just read to us shows us where it came from. We hear David uttering those words after money had been given for the building of the temple, which was eventually to be finished under his son Solomon. And his prayer shows that all the glory he wanted, not to go to him, but wanted to go to God. So the, the evidence is the early Christians took that prayer, thought it would be a good way to finish the Lord's Prayer off, and so added it at the end. And of course, we've been saying those words ever since. And really it's the essence of what we, we're praying, that we want the glory to go to God. So let's think about this phrase a little bit. I'm going to begin with a riddle. I was hoping we'd have some more children here, but you adults are going to have to get this riddle, okay? So I'm going to ask a series of questions that get easier and easier and see if anyone can get it. I'm afraid I haven't got a prize uh, for whoever gets it. But what is the same at the beginning, the same at the end, but has no middle? Any ideas? 
Not yet, okay? You will see two of me at a wedding, but I'm not the bride and the groom. Oh, no ideas? Okay, this might be a bit easier then. Sorry? A ring! Congratulations, Jane. I'm just going to say, I'm so that you can count to tell how much a tree has aged, but a ring. And of course, if you look at a ring, a ring goes on and on, doesn't it? A ring has a beginning, sorry, doesn't have a beginning, doesn't have an end, and it has no middle. It goes on and on and on. And in a sense, that's what we're saying in this phrase of the Lord's Prayer. The kingdom, the power, and the glory we want to go on and on. So let's think of those three, three phrases. We say, yours is the kingdom. And maybe that's a real statement of faith. We say, God, you're the boss, not me. You're the one who's in charge of the world and you arrange everything. We're saying you're the king over the nations, the king over our church, and also you're the king in our individual lives. We're going to live for you and not for ourselves. And then we say yours is the power. And again, maybe that's a, hope, a statement of hope as well as of faith. Often quite dangerous men can be leaders, can't they? It's quite scary what President Putin might do in our world. It's quite scary that people like Kim Jong-un in North Korea has got their fingers on nuclear weapons. And again, some people might say it's quite scary what might happen if President Trump becomes president again in America. But in this prayer, we're saying that God has got power over all these people. The power is his. Indeed, all world rulers are under the power of God. And the world isn't going to end when someone pushes a nuclear button. It's going to end when God decides that's the case. But maybe that power also refers to the Holy Spirit. We often feel very weak, but we have the very power of God living inside us, his gift of the Holy Spirit, the power that can give us the strength to live, the words to say at the right time. And again, that power is living in our lives and comes from us and not from God. So we say, yours, Lord, is the power. And then finally we say, yours is the glory. And again, sometimes we can get proud, can't we? We can maybe get a bit too big for our boots. But the book of Daniel has got a very salutary story to tell us about King Nebuchadnezzar. Nebuchadnezzar thought he was great. He thought he was powerful. And he built a great palace to show off his power and splendour. And that palace became one of the seven wonders of the ancient world. And he wanted, by building that palace, to take all the glory to himself. But if you read Daniel 4, we see God humbling King Nebuchadnezzar. He actually lost his sanity and had to live in the woods, eating grass. And in a sense, God humbled him until eventually he gave God the glory rather than himself. And again, there's a verse in the Psalms that says, Not to us, O Lord, not to us, but to your name be the glory. And in a minute, we're going to hear about another man who actually lived that out. But maybe, just to conclude, the attitude we should have is to want to give all the power, all the glory to God, because his kingdom is the one that we're seeking to establish as Christians. So we're going to sing about that now, giving God the glory, and that song we've just learned before the service. You are the King of glory, you are the Prince of peace.
like to be seated. Jane's going to bring us our second reading. The second reading is taken from John chapter 3, verses 22 to 30. After this, Jesus and his disciples went out into the Judean countryside, where he spent some time with them and baptized. Now John also was baptized in England near Salem, because there was plenty of water and people were coming and being baptized. This was before John was put in prison. An argument developed between some of John's disciples and a certain Jew over the matter of ceremonial washing. They came to John and said to him, Rabbi, that man who was with you on the other side of the Jordan, the one you testified about, look, he is baptizing and everyone is going to him. To this John replied, a person can receive only what is given them from heaven. You yourselves can testify that I said, I am not the Messiah, but I am sent ahead of him. The bride belongs to the bridegroom, the friend who attends the bridegroom waits and listens for him, and is full of joy when he must become greater, I must become less. This is the word of the Lord. So John the Baptist in that reading, what a contrast to King Nebuchadnezzar. A great example of somebody who gave all the glory to God. But just think about his situation for a moment. He could have got very big boots, he could have been very proud. He was, after all, a fantastic Christian preacher, and revival was breaking out in Judea. People were flocking to hear him. People were being convicted of their sin and were turning back to God. That could have made him very, very proud. He could have thought that he was the best preacher in Israel. Things were happening as he spoke. But he had a very different attitude. He knew his job was to prepare the way for Jesus and to point people to him. And we know that that's what he thought, because he said two things. First of all, he said that he wasn't even fit to carry Jesus' sandals. And then at the end of that reading, we heard his words, he must become greater, I must become less. And that's a fantastic attitude. It's an attitude all of us should be having as we seek to live our Christian lives and point people towards Jesus. And the word glory, when we say we want to give God the glory, we mean another word for glory is reflection. In a sense, if we're going to give God the glory, we want to act a bit like mirrors. We want people to look at us, into us and actually see Jesus, actually reflect the God's glory. We want to try and live our lives in such a way that we're shining God's light into all those dark places in the world, giving God the glory. And if you're a golf fan, there's been a tremendous example of that this week. A man called Scotty Schaefer actually won the Masters for the second time. And in the press conference after he won the Masters, he said this, it's Jesus, not me. He described how his faith really kept him grounded and that being a Christian is more important to him than actually getting lots of money and winning golf tournaments. He said, I believe in a creator. I believe in Jesus. I feel I've been given a platform to compete and show my talents. It's not anything I do. It all comes from Jesus. So John the Baptist and Sophie Shave, two men giving the glory back to God. Two men maybe acting like mirrors in the world. So just to encourage you, can you become a shiny Christian? Can you be somebody who reflects the glory of God in the world? As you, you say in your prayers, yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Let's pray. Father, we thank you that all we have been given comes from you. We pray that we would indeed be like those mirrors, reflecting your glory, so that when people look into our lives, they would indeed see Jesus. Amen.
So let's stand, we're going to sing about that again. This little light of mine, I'm going to let it shine. Your kingdom come, for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for heaven and the Amen. Now can you just think of somebody who's going through a hard time? Might be someone who's lonely or depressed. Someone who life isn't going very well for. Could you maybe pray that God is close to them and just begins to change their situation? Your kingdom come, for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. <clears throat> can we think of somebody now who is sick at the moment? We know that God's will is to bring them healing and wholeness. So can 
we just pray that his kingdom comes by bringing them that health and wholeness in their life now? Your kingdom come, for yours is the kingdom. think about our own church here at Common. And again, we know God's will is for our church to grow, bringing blessing to many people. And again, can we pray that increasingly that happens over the coming months as God, God's kingdom comes more and more in this place. Your kingdom come, for yours is the kingdom, the power and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. And moving out now to think of our world, there's so many countries where evil still holds sway, sway where people are suffering, people are being killed through warfare. Maybe God's kingdom coming means peace coming to our world. Okay, can we think of those troubled spots in our world now, holding them before God, just praying that his kingdom comes in those places. Your kingdom come. <coughs> For yours is the kingdom. Finally, we think of our own lives. We think what God might want to do through us to bring his kingdom. We think maybe how we can give the glory back to him. Can we now just ask him to move in our own lives, bringing us closer to him, that his kingdom could come, that he would be on the throne of our lives. Your kingdom come. For yours is the kingdom. The power and the glory. Right and right. Amen. As we gather all those prayers together now, as we remain seated just to sing the Lord's Prayer.
Heavenly Father, you created us by your power and redeemed us by your love. Guide and strengthen us by your spirit that we may give ourselves in love and service to you and to one another through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we say the grace here. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all evermore. So a number of notices. First of all, though, birthdays. Have we got any April birthdays? Can we sing happy birthdays to all these, these lovely folk? Baptism. I actually married Johnny and Laura uh, during uh, COVID, which is lovely. So it's great to see uh, their first baby coming for baptism on the 12th of May. So welcome, you two. Uh, just to remind you, also there is 11 this after the service in the, team, in the hall. So please do go across uh, to continue our fellowship there. Uh, our Kamani review is being printed this week. So if anyone has any magazine art articles, uh, please send them to Harry for inclusion. Uh, by 10 o'clock on Tuesday morning. Uh, this afternoon is the Mother's Union Festival service in St Anne's Cathedral. Have a chat with Anne or Shirley if you'd like to know more about that. Uh, Tuesday we have our Zoom coffee morning and again if anyone else would like to come and join us we just meet on Zoom for 40 minutes and have all sorts of wide-ranging discussions and share news together. Uh, just let me know and we can send you an invite. Uh, Mother's Union, which was going to be on Tuesday afternoon, has been put back a week because there's no electricity in the hall on Tuesday. Uh, Wednesday, we're very excited about our new course about discovering other faiths. And we're actually going to be visiting a number of different places of worship for different religions and different denominations. And we start on Wednesday night uh, by going to the Islamic Centre uh, in the middle of Belfast uh, to look around the mosque and to hear more about the Muslim faith. And the plan is to meet at 7 o'clock in the Churchill Car Park and just share transport down to these places. Um, so again, if people are willing to drive, that would be great. You can take as many people as we've got cars. But if you're interested in that, please come along at 7 o'clock to the Hall Car Park and we'll get into cars and go down together. Please note there about the dress sense um, for the mosque, particularly women, um, if you're coming. No tight clothes, and please bring a headscarf, basically. Uh, Thursday is bowling and knitting beers normal. And Saturday we have a church work party here at 10 o'clock uh, for men and women, just to do some jobs around the church and the hall. And at 4.30, Joy is meeting for all women uh, for a curry night in games. And again, everybody is welcome to that. Do go along. If you haven't yet been, it's, it's great fun right here, certainly. In the memorial room. And it's in the memorial room, not in the maple. Uh, Mother's Union um, is going to be on the 30th of April. It should be fascinating as Eileen is going to be sharing with us about our South, our South African travels. And that's followed in the evening by the Eco Club and the Building Committee. Uh, Wednesday week, we're going down to the Jewish Synagogue. And midday prayer is there on Thursday. Do come along to that. That's, that's a, a lovely service that's really growing and more and more people coming. And again, just to remind you, prayer is available after this service. If you uh, want prayer for anything or for anybody, uh, please do just stay in your pews and um, members of our healing team will come and pray for you for that. Uh, there are some Christian aid leaflets on the table at the back. Uh, please do take one if you're interested. And also, if anyone's lost any reading glasses, uh, they're on the table at the back as well. And Jim tells me, um, Jim has been taking the food up to our food bank, 
If anyone would like a bag to put items for the food bank in and bring back to church, there's a number of carrier bags there in the trolley. Please do take one uh, and bring it back full of food for the food bank. So I think that's everything. Um, shall we now stand for our final hymn? To God be the glory, great things he has done. for joining us for our family service here at Kamuni Parish Church this morning. Our first reading was read by Rosemary Williams. Our second reading was read by Jane Gray. And the service was led by the Reverend Andy Heber, who also preached, with our organist being David Rutherford. Thank you for being with us. Hope you'll join us next week for our service of the Word. <laughs>